Hey, fellow warriors, and welcome back to the A Warrior Podcast. I am so excited to be back. Took a week off last week, had some time with family. It was really our only trip as a family that we had this summer, um, which for us, we like to travel. That was kind of huge. I feel like we haven't been home, but we have been home. It's just been really crazy. So last week took some time off. No podcast last week. We were in Florida all last week, which was our old stomping grounds. We spent four years there when the kids were really little. And it was good to go back. It was hot and humid. I'm used to hot and dry. So it was very different than our Arizona weather, although we are humid, quote unquote, right now because of monsoon season. Um, but I am happy to be back. And I am so thankful that you are here with me today. Now, last time I was on, we talked about keeping our eye on the ball and living in the moment. That is what I was doing last week. I literally stepped away from my phone totally, which was frightening because when it came to emails, there that stupid promotion section folder of emails, um, I think I had like a thousand junk mails that I had to go through. But finally went through that. That was no picnic the other day. And just had some time to be present, like I said in the last podcast, in enjoying those moments, enjoying the hot, humid weather, uh, the craziness of the people, um, seeing old friends, um, visiting old locations we used to go to when my kids were little. Anyways, it was a great time, but it got me thinking. And as I was talking to my husband about this trip, <clears throat> He told me I should probably write about this, and I probably will. And if you didn't know, I do have kind of a blog um, called Stepping Out in Faith. I have not really written much on it at all in the last couple of years because I've been focused on this. And that is probably where I would end up writing something. But I really think valuable information on, as an amputee, traveling, but also in this case, traveling to... Disneyland and Universal. So I thought today I would do a little, because I'm trying to keep these short and, and quick so that you can listen to the whole thing and not give up on me. Um, I thought I would just entertain the idea a little bit of the traveling aspect and the differences we noticed when it came to Disney World and Universal out in Orlando. And it was extremely interesting. Um, I have to say some of the hardest stuff I have done um, as an amputee, and um, for those of you that don't know, I'm an above knee amputee. If you're watching, you can kind of see my leg here. Um, I have been an amputee since December of 2018, so we're going on in six years here. But I don't think I have ever done four days of five in parks. And when you spend the money you spend at Disney, you go from the moment you get up to the moment you can't walk anymore, which is saying a lot for me, but let's just put it this way. The amount of steps that I put in was over 100,000 steps in those four days. Um, it, for me, my miles tend to be about 1,119, 120 steps is a mile based on what I did some calculating a long time ago when I first started walking in my prosthetic, which would have put me at about 85 miles that whole entire week that we did travel. Um, I would say maybe it's somewhere, maybe towards 70 miles, but all in all, it's a whole lot of miles for an amputee. And it's not just walking, it is dodging people because no one looks down no one notices. I was in shorts the entire week. No one sees the leg. They, they, they aren't even seeing your face. They're looking past you and around you. And a lot of times they don't even see you as a person. Um, there is a few times that my boys got very defensive for me. Um, I usually led the path through people um, because then they could keep with my pace versus me trying to keep up with their pace. And there were a few times the football mom and me came out and I had to shoulder some people and I actually had a kid trip over me, look back and then apologize profusely to my husband who I was, I kept walking, um, but he tripped on my good foot as I was stepping out. He literally almost took my toe from underneath me. 
Um, but I'm a pretty solid person when I walk, so we made it. But I thought it would be interesting. Um, first, I wanted you to know like what it was like as an amputee walking that much and dodging people that much. Uh, there's a lot of juking going on. Um, again, football terms. There's a lot of stutter stepping. There's a lot of retracting a step and there's a lot of quick stepping. Yes, my husband did push for me to be in a wheelchair, uh, but I'm stubborn and I am ornery when it comes to getting my exercise. And if I wasn't going to walk, I couldn't eat the good stuff that I was eating on vacation. So we walked it out. Not once did I get in a wheelchair. Not once did I play my amputation off as a disability in Disney. It doesn't even matter anymore. Disney, unfortunately, at least Disney World, no, Disneyland's the same way too, but Disney World, you really notice it. Big parks, several parks, one day at a time. Disney has swung from catering totally to the person with obvious disability and wheelchairs to making it possible for wheelchairs to go in the normal lines and everybody just sit around and wait, which means that if you're like me, and even though it's really hard to be on my leg, from 8.30 in the morning, because we'd literally get to the park pre-opening, because we were staying at a Disney um, resort. So we could get there at 8.30 versus nine. And then we didn't leave till 10 p.m. I was on my feet the entire time. I did not take breaks except for a lunch and a dinner. Um, and when you're sitting in line, I guess you can consider it a break, but I have to say that my hip was really sore because I would hip out on my good side to give my residual limb a break. And then sitting on the rides, which you know are two to three minutes long, max. But what I want you to know is you would be better off if you struggle with walking anyways. It's hard enough to juke through people, but you really wanna have a wheelchair, but don't expect them to bend over backwards. We had gone into the line for Haunted Mansion no kidding, people were telling us to move forward, move forward, but there were like two wheelchairs, one in front of us, one right behind us. And when you're looking out, you don't see those people. So it looks like there's all this space and they kept saying move forward, but you're getting wheelchair um, front uh, devices into your your calf, into your, um, your Achilles tendon because people are shoving in. So it's silly. I remember when I first was injured and going to Disney that we would have to take a wheelchair because I had my legs still and I couldn't bend my legs so I couldn't walk well. So we'd get a wheelchair then and you would literally shortcut that line and go to a wheelchair line. And that was awesome. They do not have those anymore. Disney has gotten away with away with all of those. Um, you just, they made their lines I think a little bit wider to accommodate wheelchairs which is fine if you're in a wheelchair, but if you choose, like I said, if you choose not to use a wheelchair, but you really could use the shorter lines, you're out of luck. Like the only thing we did differently that you could do going to Disney is spend the extra money that the mouse put out there to get lightning lane passes, which helps you get into a faster lane, but you're still in line and you have to do it by their timeline. So that was interesting because that's probably why we took so, we put over 11 miles on the very first day um, at um, Magic Kingdom because we had the lightning lane passes. You have to pick your three um, rides you want to put on first and they put you all over the board. So we were in like a, a Tomorrowland at like 2.30, all the way over to Frontierland on the other side of the park at um, 4.40. And then we were, you know, back in Toontown at six. So you're like bouncing. It's not in order or ease of use. You can rearrange, but you also risk losing the time slot and getting put later. And so that's really hard and it was really tough. And I know my husband and I, we were getting exhausted because it was just, you're hot, you're moving around people, you're trying to dodge bullets really. And you're, and you're doing that type of stuff. Normally I carry a, what I call my leg bag, which is my backpack that has everything I could possibly need. If something were to go wrong or amiss with my prosthetic. 
which means tools, salves, my bag to put my leg back in if I have to take it out, towel to dry it off because of the sweat, um, <clears throat> just all those kinds of things that you need in case of an emergency. Because the moment you don't have it, that's when you need it. Well, I didn't want to take that because that's a really heavy, I'd say about eight pounds with all the mechanical stuff in it. So I had my purse on my backpack, like in my backpack purse, and I took like my leg bag and a small bag of ointments and stuff in case I had raw marks. And I threw that in. Reason being is even though we got to the park early and it's the funniest thing, even though you get to the park early, you have to still go through a, well, you don't have to go through a bag leg lane. It is kind of funny how it worked. You get up there and before you even get to the ticket booth area or the ticket line to show them your ticket you pre-bought, you have to go through security. And I get that. Every time we went through security, I got through okay because they'd see my leg. My leg would set it off and they'd be like, just go ahead, you're fine. But my husband got stopped every time because he had an umbrella in his bag. First day, umbrella in his bag. He goes, what do I do to make sure this doesn't happen again? He goes, keep the umbrella out. Next day, pulls the umbrella out, holds it going through security, still gets stopped. Now you have to understand that the line for people getting pulled aside randomly is as long as a ride line half the time and takes so much longer. They put, do the wand on you, they check your bag, literally pulling everything out of your bag. It's worse than TSA. And then you have to put everything back in and it was a stinking umbrella, but yet it's Florida and you're expecting rain. So you're not supposed to bring an umbrella in or you're gonna get in trouble, I don't get it. So we had to wait in line and we had to wait there for my husband and we get through and then you start going, going through everything, right? But I keep what I need, the bare necessities in my backpack purse. One, I don't wanna be off centered by a side purse or one that's on my shoulder because it's just too much work. And you don't want to not bring anything because inevitably, if you're going to be there all day, it would be a real shame if something happened or your leg shifted on a ride and you're all sweaty that you didn't have a bag or your, you know, something to put your leg back on with, whatever you use, or you didn't have a towel to dry yourself out. Or in my case, I started getting um, raw, a little bit of raw marks in the back of my limb where my um, top of my socket was rubbing. So you need to have your salves. So uh, that being said, that's what we did. And I will tell you that it it's easier if you're being pushed for sure. But if you've ever been in a wheelchair in a really crowded area, it is one of my least favorite places to be. Number one, when everybody in your party stops, they're pushing you, they stop to talk. You're facing that way and everyone's behind you having a conversation and you're not a part of it. I hate that feeling. I feel not included. And no matter how long I've done that and gone through that five years of knee surgeries, my family never really got that. If you're gonna stop, pull around and turn me around so I can be a part of it. So I don't like that feeling. Two, you're down below. So people are running by you and everything. Three, you aren't in control of how fast it's going. So inevitably you're gonna end up whacking someone with the foot rests and you're the one apologizing because you're the first person they look down to, whoever you hit. And I hate that feeling. And fourth, it's hot. So you're sitting there being sweltered by people and especially if you're in line, you're sitting there getting surrounded by people, people's butts and, and midsections and you're just, you're stuck there and it's hot. There's no breeze down low. Um, so I, I push through and I stand, I walk, I do my thing. But the only benefit, like I said, is the fact that there is no more quick lane for wheelchair people and their families because others have abused that power and said, yeah, I'm a wheelchair person and these 20 people are with me. It got 20 people plus you onto a ride quicker, leaving everybody else in the dust and people were abusing it. Remember, it takes only a few bad apples to screw things up for everybody else that need it. But that being said, at least you're sitting if you're in line. So you take the good with the bad. Now, on the reverse side, we went to Universal uh, one day 
have to do Universal, I have to do Harry Potter, got to do all that fun stuff. I'll have to share some pictures on this post. Um, but they are a complete 180 of how Disney is. And I'm not kidding you. When I say we did rides at Disney, like the new Tron ride, I don't know if you've seen it, check it out. It is epic. But you literally lean forward on one of those bikes, like from the movie Tron. I tried my leg out outside. They had a device out there so you could test to see if you fit in it well or whatever before you go on the ride. And it's great. Disney did not ask if I would be okay and my leg would be okay in that position. I just got on. Universal? You sit there and you wait in line, you wait in line, you get up there and they pull you aside and say, I'm sorry, you have to wait here for my um, my leader or my administrator to come and approve you getting on our ride. That wouldn't be so bad, but one, it's not the same in every ride. Some rides, we would get right there, there'd be no one in line and they'd stop us before we even entered, which makes sense because if you can't, then you're not sitting in line but most of the lines are inside where it's cooler. So there were rides that we sat outside in the sun waiting for an administrator to come through to, to approve me. There have been rides we've gone all the way through, shown our ticket, shown our fast pass because they have fast passes there, gotten all the way up to getting on and being pulled to like lane one, your party's in lane one. Oh, wait a second, sorry, we need you to pull aside. And the next thing you know, you've waited in line for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, a half an hour only to be pulled aside waiting for an administrator to come. The only thing they would ask is, where is your leg? Stop. Do you feel comfortable in this ride? And is your leg on securely? I have never been denied, but I have been caught even multiple times on the exact same ride. And I've said, I've been on this ride already. And they'll say, I'm sorry, I still have to have my administrator come. And you're like, oh my gosh. So they go overboard and you're sitting there waiting. However, what they do when they show see that you're disappointed and your family's all waiting for you because everybody waits for you, um, I have gotten free passes for another ride or to do that ride again without, you know, any problems. And so that's kind of nice too. I will say we did get the fast passes for Universal. They are god awful expensive. They are more expensive than Disney, but they don't give you time slots to be at the ride. You can just be like walking in your circle with your family and go, oh, let's try this ride. Show the pass and go in the fast lane. That is so much nicer than trying to line up where you'll be when within the hour for that ride like they do at Disney. So it's one, one or the other. You deal with people that don't care at all anymore and you just deal with it or people that care too much and you deal with it. So I'm here to tell you it's possible. It is fun. Um, I don't think there are any rides that I have gone on as an amputee that I couldn't do. Um, granted, I am an above knee. So the only ride that would be questionable for like a below knee amputee might be the Harry Potter ride in the castle because your feet are dangling and you would really not want to lose your legs. So you may not be able to go on. I don't know. Or they might ask. I don't know. I wouldn't even venture to guess what they might say with you. Um, but when I sit my and I have a long residual limb, when I sit, my leg is up. There's no no chance of it falling off. That would be the only ride, but there has not been a ride that I haven't fit on or been approved to sit on and do. And that is, like I said, including Tron, which was literally a leaning forward. And I'll, I have to find that picture and I'll put it on my, um, either on my social media post or I will put it in, I'll put it in this podcast post so you can see it. If you go to my website, www.ba warrior360.com you will see the write-up and I usually add a bunch of pictures in there but you'll have to take a look at it but I just want you to know that it is possible to go and have a great time and not even even phase you that you're an amputee unless you really struggle with walking and then that's a whole nother ball game because you have the heat the humidity the mass amounts of people then a lot of standing in line and I will tell you with certainty that um, it took a couple days for me to recuperate 
after that trip. So we did uh, a park one day. We did golfing the second day. Yes, in that heat. Um, the third day we did another park, fourth day, another park, fifth day, another park. Um, it was hot. It was so humid. It was, I think low nineties and about 80% humidity. So it was really, really wet. Um, my leg never fell off. It didn't even shift, which I'm surprised because you're standing and sitting in rides, but you find your way to stores when your body can't take anymore. We first day we didn't drink enough water. I had a massive headache, massive headache all the next day. So golfing was tough. So I suggest that you make sure you drink plenty of water, even if it means having to buy a bottle of water there. They have refill stations everywhere in the parks. Keep it refilled, keep hydrated. Make sure you have a backpack you can hold a water bottle. Um, I would also highly suggest stretching. I had a hard time. I'm, I'm normally tight in my hamstring, my good leg. By the end of this trip, I remember sitting on the floor in our resort, trying to reach my toe. And the only time I could reach my toe was my leg had to be bent, like really high, like a 40 degree bend for me to actually touch my toe. And it was just screaming in my hamstring. I was so tight and my hips were so, so sore. So I should have been doing some back stretches and everything I did. After the first day, that was over 10 miles, almost 11 miles, I um, I was in a lot of pain that night. I will be honest with you, I was in so much pain. I didn't want to fess up to my husband because I didn't want him to say, you need to do the wheelchair. Um, that's how stubborn I am. That poor guy has to deal with that. It is horrible. But I am, I am the kind of person that will push through it all. And I did. I pushed through it. I had a couple nights of very little sleep, really bad headaches from dehydration, um, and a very sore, my lower back. I couldn't even sleep one night. I couldn't sleep that section right at the base of your spine um, was so sore. I couldn't even sleep on my stomach like I normally do because it was spasming. Um, even if you think you're walking well, there's no walking well when you're dodging people and walking fast and walking 10 miles in a day. You are gonna start to do what I call the penguin waddle and you're gonna start limping a little bit. And when you start doing that and you all of a sudden realize you haven't, you've been doing that for a couple hours, your hips are gonna start getting really sore. So you need to be stretching and really paying attention to your body to keep things loose. Um, I, the only thing I brought with me to help, well, I didn't even bring it with, we had to actually go to the store. I told my husband I need Tylenol just to relax the muscle spasms that were happening in my back. Cause when I start to do things in my lower back, I start to get really bad phantom pain. And that's what happened that first day that, um, that was after Saturday. So Saturday night and Sunday night, I did not sleep well. Golf does not help because there's a lot of that motion, which was tweaking my back more. And a lot of the golf carts, um, you had to stand the golf cart with the, with the golf cart. You couldn't bring it up on the grass. So walking up a hill to the, the tee and then back down and everything, there was just a lot of that after having a sore day of 10 miles, 11 miles. So there's a lot of that that goes into that. So I would really, really highly suggest you learn some stretches that will help you keep limber, um, really focus on your gait and don't do like I did. Don't try to push hard all day long. Take time for yourself. I wanted to do everything with my family because this, we haven't been to Disney as a whole family since my first year being an amputee and I know I wasn't getting the run as fast as I am now. And I know that we did not spend, we did not go to all those parks. We went to, I think we only had a day or two of parks. So when you have just a day, you just do everything you can for the day. But I pushed really hard the first day and still had to get through all those other days and all those other parks. So it was really intense. Thus the reason I just, I stayed off social media all this past weekend and everything since we've been home. Um, we got home Friday night and it took Saturday, Sunday for me to like 
feel more comfortable. My hips relaxed a little bit more. Finally got back to the gym yesterday. That was hard because I was not motivated because I was like still tired physically um, and mentally my game was off. And so I'm giving myself a little grace this week. May or may not get to the gym tonight with my kids. Um, husband is traveling, so I think that I might just rest up tonight. Today's my puppy's third birthday. So she's loving mama being home with her and she sleeps right here next to me. And um, yeah, just gonna take my time and enjoy this moment. Like I said, two weeks ago, just keeping my eye on the ball, what's important, um, finding what I love, keeping in touch with what's important to my family, what brings me peace and joy, what makes me happy and, and sticking things with things like that. I think call to action wise, you know, I always end my podcast or at least 99% of the time I do with a call to action because I really firmly believe that if you're going to listen to someone talk, maybe give people something they can actually incorporate and do in their own life. And for me, I guess it would be is to, um, the stretching aspect. And we're going to actually do an Instagram live today, the 21st. Um, me and uh, myself and Dr. Jackie Garcia on unlimited conversations on Instagram. We do one every other Wednesday. This one is going to be, it's, it's, it was brought up because of how lack of limberness I had on the trip. And I believe that also attributed to me being sore, more sore than I should have been. So, and I know I don't stretch. I'm, I like to lift. I don't like to stretch. Um, so I think that conversation is our call to action should be make sure you're stretching, make sure you're stretching your hip flexor, but make sure that you're taking care of and stretching out both hip flexors. This one was tight for me too. Make sure that your able bodied side, your, that limb is stretched. Your calf is stretched. Your quads are, are stretched your hamstrings because that's going to give you better range of motion. That's going to give you better mobility. And that's going to give you longevity of your sound leg. So make sure that you're taking care of, you know, the good part of you, the one that needs to last. I mean, I still hopefully have a lot of years left in me, but this is the leg that's going to take me there. I don't have the two to offset. I just have the one. So if you're like me and you're an amputee, we always focus on taking care of the residual limb. But I'm at a point now where, you know, almost six years out, I need to start really focusing on the fact that the, my hips, but this knee and this ankle, they're going to start giving on me and they're going to start becoming a problem. So I am going to start a stretching program every night before I go to bed. I want to make sure I'm stretched in the morning. I'm just going to see where I'm at, limber up a little bit before I just take off and do my thing. That is my goal and that is my promise to myself is to start stretching daily. Um, even if it's for a couple minutes, just to take stock on where you're at with your mobility and limberness. Um, but keep that in mind, your call to action, get limber, stretch. It can be done, it doesn't matter how old you are. I found when I started karate back when I was 40 that I couldn't barely touch my toes with, um, you know, sitting on the ground and trying to stretch my hamstrings to being able to almost do the splits and put my chin on the ground. So you can get limber as you work on it and progress. So just work on that. Your body will react positively. It just takes time. Don't bounce. Bouncing, you can really hurt yourself. So just take a stretch, deep stretch to you. Feel it and hold it, hold it, hold it. Release and then do it again. Yeah, no bouncing. So anyways, I hope this helps you. I hope you enjoyed the the um, talk on travel, especially for parks. I know there's a lot of us that want to get back to living a good, fun life. And some of us have family and kids. And Disney is always something we like to try to do with our kids. A lot of people will save for years just to get to Disney with their family. And you don't want to be that person that says, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. Um, ask me questions, throw something my way on Be A Warrior 360 on Instagram or Facebook. If you have questions about travel, um, look for me to post about 
um, a little bit more detail in a vlog or a on my blog on on traveling to those couple places because I have some insight that I want to share and uh, I hope you guys have a really awesome day a beautiful blessed week and as always be healthy be happy be you